Mario Sandoval, welcome to the Financial Freedom Fast podcast. What is going on, my man? Oh, man, glad to be here. I appreciate, I'm honored you having me on your podcast. Just living life, man, working on projects, juggling every single one of them. But uh, it's good, man. It keeps me busy, keeps me young, keeps me hungry. Living so. life, juggling a lot of projects is definitely a an understatement. But yeah, and it definitely keeps you young, man. I don't know. Every time I see you, it looks like you're like getting younger rather than getting older. What's the secret there, man? You got to stay busy or what? Dude, it's, uh, it's living life, man. It's literally just embracing my inner child. I re everybody, I refuse to grow up, man. I've never grown up, dude. I remember my ex telling me, are you ever going to grow up? And I'm like, nope. No, I'm not. I'm going to continue to play. I'm going to continue to feel like I'm in my early 20s. And I people tell me that. And I think when we believe, when we truly believe that we, we embrace our inner child and we believe, I feel like I'm in my early twenties. And I think eventually we manifest that youth. We manifest the physical side of, of ourselves. And I feel young. I feel healthy. It isn't some crazy diet or some crazy workout or it's, it's living life, man. It's having a balance of, Hey, I'm going to, you seen, I'm sure you see my Instagram and I party a lot, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I live life, dude. I party a lot. So, you know, <laughs> dude, I love it, man. I see you out at the festivals and doing your thing, bro. And traveling the world, man, just this young, like this curiosity that you have, man, to just jump around try new places the energy that you have to go and do that i think it's something that a lot of guys inspire a lot of people inspire to have that type of energy even in their 20s or their 30s or however old they may be like this energy to keep us young keep us excited excited and keep us doing all these things man that is what we want to do so how are you able to to do this like how have you created this lifestyle where you're able to go do these things for yourself i think as most of us we go through a period of learning we go through a period of working hard of working for the man of doing what society has told us to do go to school right. work at a company wear a suit and tie basically grind for the man and ignore your own dreams ignore you can do that whenever you get enough money or retire and that that just that seems so distant and so far that I was like, no, I refused. I rebelled and I was like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it quick. And I vowed to be a millionaire by 30 and I thought, was it 30 or no, by 40? I'm sorry. Yeah. By a millionaire by 40. And uh, I accomplished it by 35. Wow. And I did that basically. Yeah. Just saying, you know what? I'm not going to work my ass off. And for someone else, I'm not going to do what society expects us to do, work for a company, get a retire. Usually we don't, usually we get fired, laid off, something, the economy falls apart, which happens all the fucking time. And then we'll start over again. And I, and I decided to start over for myself. I started, I, I started to say, you know what, I'm going to make this happen. And whenever you have that mentality, I believe the universe, I'm, I believe in spirituality and I believe that the universe, I read this on the alchemist, the universe mm -hmm. will conspire to make things work for you. When right. you truly want something, the universe will conspire to make that happen. And I believe that's what happened. I truly believed I was going to do this. I was going to do it honorably. I was going to do it honesty. I wasn't going to try to price gouge someone. I really changed an industry. I disrupted an industry, which got me from making 80 grand a year to 8 million a year. And it just blew, blew it away. I blew, I was able to really register that there is a pattern, that there is a way to do it, but you have mm. to pull out of that. And that's why our conversation about you're still working hard and you still have this pressure on yourself is because if you don't, then you lose the honorable side. You lose the loyalty to yourself and to others. But whenever your intentions are good and you're really trying to do something, right. the universe will conspire to make it work. Dude. And I look at that. And then sure enough, it happens, man. It happens. So you have to can 
be humble, right? You got to be humble. You got to, you can't be cocky and arrogant and say, oh, I know this. I'm a millionaire. I've done this before. Now I'm just going to do it again. And I'm going to, I'm going to take a bigger cut next time. And I'm going to, that's where the greed comes in. And universe mm -hmm. will help you with that. Mm -hmm. It may help some people, but later on down the road, they lose it. I heard that story before. So that's what keeps me going, man. And you stick true to those original values that help to create what you wanted to create like you just said you didn't let yourself get greedy you're not saying oh i could take advantage of these people over here and take a little bit extra there so why don't i do it no you're gonna stick true to what you originally came in so you said you disrupted the industry how'd right. you disrupt the industry and, and what did you whenever you think of the greats the guy the people that have just changed the game jeff bezos steve jobs Mike, bill gates Elon. You name it, I can go on and on, right? Change the game. They literally looked at a problem. A lot of us go into business to make money. That's yep. the wrong thing to think. That's the wrong way, at least for me, it does not work. What I look at is I say, where is there a problem? Where is there a problem that, that we were taught in school the status quo? We're not taught in school to think outside the box and come up with our own originality. We are taught to follow a certain, I have a, I have two master's degrees and a bachelor's degree, and it never taught me to think outside the box. It taught mm. me processes, patterns, how to basically do what's being done out there. I had to pull away from that. I had to push away from that and to start looking for where's there a problem. So my nomad project, to give you an example, what I'm doing is I'm disrupting a, a, the retirement industry. It is $36 trillion business just in the U.S. alone. Mm. And it is, it's an industry that is graded as seem. Who says I want to go retire and live in, in, in a retirement home in Florida or something? Nobody says that. Right. We say when we retire, we're going to travel. Yeah. So I want to go into this industry and say, hey, that's not what we want to do. We don't want to go into a box play bingo and watch TV, right? right? But the industry tells us that's what we want. I'm going to change that. I see there's a problem and I'm going to say, no, people are going to look forward to retirement. People are going to want to travel and do these things. And so my nomad project caters to it, to making it simple for people to go do just what you are doing, Matt, just what right. I do. And, but the hardest thing is to plan it. But with new technology like G, a chat GPT, Google's fighting for this AI is making it easier for us to be able to say, hey, I want to go here. I want to stay here. I want to be able to do this at this budget. And the right. technology will facilitate it. That That's an example of an industry disruptor. I disrupted an industry in the oil business. It was mm -hmm. a very greedy. There was supply and demand was just it wasn't it was a hoteling industry. Right. And guys that sleep out into that work for fracking and whatnot, North Dakota, Texas, man, they were sleeping in trucks. They were sleeping in these man camps that look like prisons, eating right. horrible food. And there was a, a demand for some kind of modular hoteling and modular mm. food, but it was so expensive. Suppliers wanted to just charge outrageous amounts. I spent about eight months looking for suppliers to really provide this amazing place for my employees when I worked when I worked for a company, the oil company, and they wouldn't unless it was just 10 times more expensive than your regular hotel. Mm. And then I did the math eventually and I looked at everything and I was like, no, I'm not satisfied with this. So I left the company and I created my own. I created exactly what it was I was looking for. And I did it at a very reasonable price because I took greed out of the line item and income statement. I took greed. I took right. corporate structure of a, of a big company and it was just me and four other dudes. Huh. And we killed it. And we broke the industry because everybody wanted to stay with us. So we had a backlog of months and months to create these man camps all over the country. And it started going all over the world. And the companies that were being greedy, that would not, at first, when I try to negotiate with them, they wouldn't budge. Right. They got caught with literally like their pants down. They were like, what do we do? <laughs> so I gave them two options. And this is what I go with when I disrupt an industry. Your two options is you change 
and you meet the minimum criteria for the price, or you go bankrupt. It's your choice. Right. So that's when I go into the mind when I create a project or do something, I'm going to give you a Mercedes Benz for the price of a Civic. Right. That's the way to do my projects. Dude, that's a pretty incredible story. You saw, I think the main thing you had there was you saw this need. You were like, my people need this. My people want this. And I am not satisfied with paying them these outrageous prices that they're charging. And like you said, the greed, the greed got to these companies and they just wanted way too much money, man. And you were able to come in and create this solution that was the solution that you wanted you Absolutely. saw this opportunity and you were able to go make it happen that's incredible man and now are you still involved in that type of business is that still going on it so when oil crashed in 2014 we ended up selling it in 2016 to one of the competitors <laughs> that was really trying to buy us out during the time and we would not budge. We it broke my heart to sell it, but oil ended up going to the negative, literally crashed. So we were like, whew, thank God. And that was a good, a good thing. But I think the beauty of it was the industry for it, it, we lasted, we went strong for about two years and the industry was forced to change. When we, when, again, I gave them two options, they either give great low prices and provide amazing food and amazing stuff because the people, the guys would talk. They're like, dude, we got video games. We're eating like healthy stuff. We got cable TV, pool tables, basketball courts. Right. And then the other ones were like literally trailers, like prisons <laughs> for twice the cost or three times the cost. So it just did not make sense. So they're like, I don't want to work for this company anymore. So they will leave the oil company to go work for the oil company that was that was supplying these hotels. Wow. So it was, it, we realized that they, the oil companies got so much more out of this because their revenue completely increased because these guys were happy. They were more productive. They were getting better night's sleep. They were eating better. They were the fuel of these, of this industry. And when you make up and it's like you either if you this is common sense but sometimes we don't see it as that if you treat an employee with respect love care for them they're going to work their butts you suppress them and you give them crap they're not going to give you your all man they're going to give right. you the bare minimum you make them you make them work 20 hours a day what do you think they're going to produce for you they're not <laughs> yeah it's someone who's happy and enjoys their job and enjoys the community is going to be 10 times more productive than someone who's unhappy. They'll do more in five hours than someone else will do in 15 hours. I'm reading right now the Buddha and the badass it's called, and it's all just about bringing happiness and culture and relationships and community into the workforce. And that'll 10 X what your employees doing for you, man. I love that. You have a strategy, if I'm not mistaken, that when we met at the Jason Drees event, I really wanted to talk to you about this and we had a discussion on it. So you've bought commercial buildings right. and then you have also owned or been a partner in the business that goes into these commercial buildings. Can you talk about that strategy a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. We would go in and either myself or myself and a business partner would buy the land or the building, in some cases both. And we would also, uh, we would sell, so we would own 100% of the building ourselves, the real estate right. part, but then we would, create a business right whether it's a restaurant a bar a gym something and we would partner up with an operator someone who really had the hunger to whether to run a gym or to run a restaurant or to a bar whatever that may be because i didn't want to run it right we so we would we would grab a concept whatever we thought the real estate that suited the best right we would study the markets all and whatnot to see what would be the best thing for this part and then we would partner up with someone who would actually want to operate give them equity let them 
basically make it their own and the, take it to the top so that we, the, that company, the operating company would pay rent to us, the landlords. So it was this double revenue stream of not just getting rent for the real estate, but also from the operations of the business. And then we would, yeah. And it was an incentive to keep the operations going because it's paying us rent. And on top right. of that, we wanted to be profitable because we're also generating profitability from that. I And I love, I think there's a lot of people out there right now who have commercial properties and haven't thought about this technique before. And if this is their first time hearing about this, what's a way, if they have a vacant spot right now, what are the steps? What do they need to do to fill that with a business and an operator that can make this strategy come to fruition for them? It really is a personal question because there is a lot, some folks in real estate, just they just want to focus on the real estate. They just want the right. rent to be paid. And I can definitely see that side of it. Just from my experience, I could tell you that I would have rather Chick-fil-A or McDonald's moved in <laughs> and they pay less rent versus operating my own restaurant and my own gym or my own. It does. It is that balance. If you have the contacts, you have someone who you just believe truly can really kill it in that industry, then I would suggest using my formula. But if you don't, that's where it gets very complicated because you don't want to operate something on yourself. And a lot of times it's that you got to incentivize these operators, right? Mm -hmm. You are the landowner and, or the owner of the real estate and are getting the majority of the shares of the income of the operating company. The operator is going to get greedy and it's going to be like, Hey, you're not working and I'm over here killing myself and you're making more money than I am. Mm -hmm. And it gets, gets into a struggle, right? When you have a third party that comes in, doesn't matter. Who cares? Pay your rent and they can make millions or lose millions. It doesn't matter to you. They got to pay rent. So it's a personal question, really. So if somebody personally wants to do it, how do they find the operator? How is, who's what's the process for finding somebody and vetting someone to create this business within, let's say you want to put in a gym. Yeah. So for example, with my gym, we purchased the land, we purchased the entire property and we, it was actually our gym. It was the CrossFit gym that we belong to and they were mm -hmm. going to shut it down. So we, came in and said, first of all, we don't want it to shut down because this is our home. This is, we come here all the time. It's a, a great community. So we ended up purchasing the land and the operations. Mm -hmm. And so we just, we had an operator who really had the, um, the heart to operate. And then, so we negotiated something with them to keep it going. To me, that's easier than starting from scratch and saying, Hey, a restaurant could go here. Let's find someone who wants to be a chef or something that's a little harder because you really i think this my formula works whenever you have someone and that's what i've had in the past we've had known someone who's who, who would kill it at doing x or whatever that service would be and then they would come and kill it so it's but it's more of an art versus a science when it comes to doing this i really like that strategy that was something that pulled me and i've still thought about that once i find a commercial building that i'm gonna buy i would like to have it be 10 a small mall center right with 10 different businesses nine of them are booked up but one of them i go and create that business or whatever was there if i like that and i want to do that bring someone else in who's passionate about that and can make that happen i would love to i think that, that strategy is a lot better than because the one I've done is opportunities, right? There are opportunities, mm -hmm. one here, opportunities, one there, where it wasn't really a strategy for me to say, Hey man, I'm just want to do this everywhere and spread this. This was right. more opportunities that occurred, but your strategy is very strategic because if you do have a mall center of let's say 10, 10 places, you make sure that those 10 places are leased by, I, I hate to say it, but the franchises that are big, right? The ones that you know are not going to- They're going to pay. Businesses. They're going to pay your rent. The small mom and pop ones are the hard ones. Those are the ones that are, it's a riskier tenant. 
right? But right. if you got nine of them, the best, and then you have one that is completely yours, that's a pretty good strategy because then your rent, you're not so reliant, man, I'm not going to be able to pay the mortgage on this building or whatever. It's, it's economies of scale, right? So that's right. a good strategy. Actually. Yeah, I love that. I appreciate that. Mario, random question just popped into my head, man. What's your yeah. passion? What are you passionate about? Man, I love to travel. I love to explore new cultures and very social. People give me energy. I was an accountant by trade, something that you have to sit back in an office and cooped up and just crunch numbers. And it just drove me nuts. So getting out and meeting people and embracing the culture, man, that's my passion. Like the apartment I bought in Barcelona, man, it's in the heart of the city. You open the windows and you just hear the energy of the city, man. And it's just, it just lights me up. And then I come out and there's people everywhere and I just get so much energy. I was telling someone that the other day there, I was telling them, I don't even know if there's a term for it, but you know how some people have social anxiety? They have the opposite of that. I need people. I go right. crazy. I'm cooped up by myself too much. And they create so people, an, they man, create an energy. People, man. man, I remember going out. Where even was that? Austin, I think the Jason Drees event was. And we went out. And man, yeah. you were, <laughs> you're just alive, man. Do you have any <laughs> tips for our listeners on... And we will get into that international investment after this. But any tips for waking up and just being full of excitement and excited for your day and happy it seems every time i see you man you're just a ball of pure energy how do you <laughs> keep that up what's the secret there man i struggle with it but i it's something that it's it's something that takes practice it's living in the moment living in the present there's a book that was recommended to me it's called the power of now, power of um, now yep. and it's all about living in the present moment. I believe that I didn't believe in a destiny until June of last year. And I believe, I do believe in a destiny now. I believe that everything has been orchestrated, has been somehow divinely planned. And when we try to rush through, it's like we are trying to force the universe into something that it's already planned. Mm -hmm. You're so Whenever you relax and we stress because we're worried about the future, which is an illusion. Nobody's seen the future. There's so when, only, there's literally only this right now, yeah, here only right this, now, right this now. This is it. So there's an illusion that tomorrow we're trying to figure out what tomorrow is going to bring. We don't know. It's an illusion. Right. The past has already happened. We can't change that. That's an illusion. So we spend 99.9% .9 of our time completely delusional because 1% of the time we're living this right now, the present. So the goal of this book talks about it and I try to practice it and live by it is to be in the moment, to embrace the moment, to meditate. I, one of my meditation is, and most people think it's to completely close your eyes and listening to meditation music. My meditation is going for a run, a walk, getting on a bike and unplugging completely, no music, nothing, and just listening to nature, listening to the birds, children playing, looking at trees. That has been in the moment. We're spending our time on what is happening right now and to me that brings so much peace most of us don't most of us spend 99 percent of our time thinking of the future and the past and the past yeah. complete illusions yeah. yeah yeah the future the past can bring anxiety it can make you upset it can bring depression the future yeah. can bring fear could bring anxiety you're not sure what's coming in the future when you're right here in all of this, even if you're sad right now, and you could just say, right now I am sad, and I see my sadness, and I acknowledge it, and I'm there with it. You're just right here experiencing life, 
and and that's what it is man i love that that you brought that into this and bringing meditation is just a daily life is a meditation if you want it to be if you like us talking right now if i'm just sitting here and being here and talking with you this may be my form of meditation and i think meditation what most have that's why they a lot of people talk about meditation being so important it's really being in the present it's a form of being in the present it's one form of being right. in the present that's why there's so many different ways of being in the present moment and that also <clears throat> to me and i've actually studied this and confirmed it that it slows down time it actually mm. time eventually in the book, The Power of Now talks about time does not exist. It's mm. also an illusion, right? So when you ask me the question, Mara, you look younger and, and like you're going <laughs> like oh, people, I get that all the time is because I'm, I feel that when I am happy, when I am trying to live in the present moment, it really does slow down time. It really slows mm. down. There's another book called The Secret mm -hmm. talks about as well about being in the present manifesting your own youth and mm -hmm. you start reverse aging everything people with their minds they've cured themselves from cancer they've cured right. themselves from so many different things and we've heard of all these things our mind is so powerful but it's about allowing getting all the garbage in our minds that is fluttered for fear anxiety social media and war and all these things that happen and pushing all that aside and just being present because nothing mm. else exists it's what we are doing right now and if you focus on just that because time is doesn't exist there is no time it's just this it's whatever it's this is <laughs> that's it <laughs> it's just this right now man and just a little bit more on that if one technique that i use if you want to get into the present right now it's an easy way it's just literally to focus on the breath yes in and out in and out and the concept behind this it's pretty easy to grasp when you're focusing on your breath you can't breathe a future breath and you can't breathe a past breath so the only breath that you're focusing on right now is the breath it's that you're breathing breath. right now so that's all this is man but oh that's man I, right. and that's a and that's another form to get you in the present but have you right. noticed that all of those forms are to get you to that keyword present be whatever here. it is it's present Yep. Be here now and love your life. And that's how this guy stays with so much energy, so much excitement and stays young, man. Mario, I love you, bro. Let's dig into our last final questions here, man. So I've got a question I ask everybody on this podcast that launches on Wednesdays. It's the fastest way to 10K. So if somebody wants to build $10,000 of passive income every month. And I know we've talked spiritual, we've talked business you reach this passive income level and it can give you the freedom to practice your spirituality, practice relationship building, practice, tr go travel. It can open up your life. What would you say is the fastest way that someone right now, given today's market, if they have no assets, how could they build $10,000 of passive income every month? It's a hard one because you, you have to get to that level of what I did to be able to, if you're not really have the financial ability to go purchase rental properties if you don't have that ability to do that yet because that i believe that rental properties that's something i'm doing again i went to barcelona bought an apartment now i'm creating a syndication of 50 units to go purchase 50 per rental properties in barcelona but i can do that because i'm at that level that i can get to it i needed to go through the step of breaking that industry finding a problem, thinking outside the box of just your job. And I did it at my job, right? Most of us go into our job and say, oh, I'm an accountant, so I got to crunch numbers and I got to get this done. Forget that. Keep doing it, obviously. Don't forget mm. your job. But start asking, what does this company do? What does it solve? What does it produce? What is it doing? Just start really getting, and the company's going to love you for it because they're going to be like, wow, they're really interested in the company right. you're working for. But within that, you're going to find a problem like I did. You're going to find a problem that it's, this isn't right. Your intuition will tell you this isn't right. This is too expensive. The product is not great. And then you're going to find something that you're going to say, I can do better. And they do it. And, and then that do is what it. gets you 
to completely skyrocket, right? You completely skyrocket your income that once you have enough income like that is the way I did it. Now, I can tell you my mom's story. She started with real estate, gosh, 30, 40 years ago. And my mm -hmm. mom was taking care of kids. She, she's immigrant from Guatemala. We're immigrants from Guatemala. So it wasn't like she came here with money. She worked, she bought a house, very inexpensive home. We lived in it for about a year or two. Then she rented that property out and she, we moved to another house. She bought another house, took out a loan, mm -hmm. bought another house. Then she rented that house. Now she's got over 67 properties, completely paid off. And that is some massive wow. <laughs> rental, right? But it's a slow process. I believe there's a quicker process. I believe that I did it a lot quicker mm. by just looking for problems in the in, in any industry at your job. If you're a, an entrepreneur, really start looking for, hey, how do I how do I fix this? Amazon did it. Jeff Bezos looked at an industry and said, nobody wants to get up to go shop America for a year. And what did he do? Created something that disrupted an industry that has which is sad, but has really, in a good way, it's made shopping more and more efficient and easier, but it's disrupted the retail industry, right? It's completely broken right. a lot of industries in the retail. Disrupting. And I'm going to add one more question in because I wanted to talk about this. Dude, the international investments, man. What brought you to Barcelona, brother? What do you, what, why there? Would you get there? What are you doing there? And what are you thinking about doing with this syndication? So I, it was just a dream of mine. I've traveled all over the world. I've been everywhere. And I think we all have that kind of favorite place that we're like, mm -hmm. man, I could live here. I'm a guy who needs energy. So living in an island off the coast of the South Pacific is not me. That's, I would go nuts, right? I need energy, but I love the beach. I love mountains. I love topography, weather, culture, art. And Barcelona was just that boom, explosion. Mm. And I, pr prior to COVID, I was actually going to go buy a place over there and start shopping or just really exploring. Thankfully, I didn't because the euro was at $1.35. <laughs> and recently, because of the war with Russia and Europe is a little unstable, Man, the euro went down to 97 cents to a dollar. And I ended up purchasing the real estate there is so much cheaper. I think most Americans are like, man, California, that's the place to live. But God, you're going to spend millions trying to live somewhere like the way that I, where I bought my place, uh, where I bought my place for six dollars $600,000. <laughs> and it would literally cost four or five million. And so the real estate was cheap. The Euro was cheap. The city is vibrant. It has so much income coming in. The Spanish economy is not the greatest, but it has so much money coming in from expats, students, tourists, which just made sense for rental income, right? So I ended up buying the place, lived there for about a month, rented it out to a student, like mm. within 24 hours. Parents from Norway, they send me money to Why? my European bank. And uh, I came back, I, I realized that, man, this was a cool idea. And when I went to Lake Tahoe, Go Abundance event, mm. everybody was asking me about it. Everybody's bro, like, dude, what? This is awesome, man. Mm. Tell me more about it. And so I would tell them and they're, they're like, dude, you got to do a syndication, man. You got to do like something because it's not a startup. It's something I've already done. I already mm -hmm. went, did, I touched the waters. I already Proof of concept. I proved the concept, man, and I've been spending, ever since I got back from Lake Tahoe, I've been spending the last few weeks crunching numbers, doing research, having meetings with my lawyers here, lawyers in Spain, law mm. CPAs, having really trying to be like, is this real? This is really a good idea. This is a mm. great idea. And what I want to do is with the syndication, I want to, I want the investors to feel that they now have a vacation home that they can go to in Barcelona. This is not a risky investment where all investments have the risk, but this is an investment that they're going to hold a deed. They have a mm -hmm. deed to them. This isn't, oh man, I invested some money. And if it goes south, I got nothing. No, you have a deed. Move into right. it. Do something with it. Nobody can take real estate from you unless you don't pay your taxes, but right. that's not going to happen. So that was something that I'm really excited about. It's got a purpose. I'm looking for this, this feeling to make people like, damn, man, I got a place in Barcelona. We all, a timeshare, if you will, I'm going to give them two weeks a year 
since mm. they can choose any of the places, any of the 50 locations in uh, Barcelona, and I'm going to keep it minimum $400,000 mm -hmm. to $600,000. That's the kind of apartments that are going to have. So they're going to be nice quality apartments in great areas. And so the goal is around 50, raise about 25 million to make mm. that purchase. So these high end places, rent them out, but always allocate 12, 12 days out of the year for that investor to be able to say, Hey, I'm blocking this off. I'm going to go stay there. That this is right. my time, my spot. And the rest is rental income. The rental market is great over there. You're getting something cheap. You're getting an amazing place. It's sexy. Who can say, who can brag about their rental properties? Mm. It's hard. I mean, like you got a rental, you got rental income. You got rental income coming in from Barcelona. That's pretty damn sexy. <laughs> yeah, man. That's, that's good stuff to have. And I'm headed there in two weeks, bro. So I'm going to check out some apartments there. You got me excited about that, brother. Absolutely. Man, can't wait to see what you do with that, bro. Last, last two questions here. What is one actionable step our listeners should take today to start on their path towards financial freedom? Really, my thing is, I think one of the biggest words that I live by is humility, being humble and realizing that whenever you're humble, you say, you know what, I can't do this alone. I need help. You, you get yourself in that. You will attract. I believe in the law of attraction. What got me to where I'm at wasn't me alone, was the team, the people that I came across whenever I was like, I can't do this by myself. Arrogant people will say, I can do this by myself. They can only get so far by themselves. I'm that kind of person that everything I do it with a team and I'm humbled to be able to say, hey, I need you. I need mm. you because I can't do this by myself. And I think that's, that is the first step stone that really gets you to that financial freedom because it's a mindset. It's a complete mm. mindset, right? You have to balance confidence. Being humble does not mean that you're timid and shy and you don't want to take that risk. Being humble to say, hey, I'm going to make it, but I'm not going to do it alone. I can't do it alone. Right. Yep man that is great it's like the who not how right you cannot do everything and if your business can do everything you're not at the scale that you could be at so if you're doing exactly. everything you you gotta you can step out you could build more if you just leverage others man that's great advice there last question what is one question that you wish I would have asked you? What is one topic that you wish I would have covered? And how would you have answered that question or how would you have expanded on that topic? That's, that's, a, that's a good question. I I'm always love a talking. One of the biggest things is that I always want people. So I'm doing a coaching. I created a coaching company with Brody. Right. And uh, one of the things that people forget that is that they need someone to help them get to that success level and so a question is that can you do it alone right or do you need coaching do you need something to me i think that most of us have it in us but a lot of times we need that help of just someone to say hey you got this you need this every sports team you can imagine has coaches right no michael jordan had coaches he never stopped oh i'm good I made it. I'm like the best of all time. I don't need mm -hmm. any more coaching. So I think uh, a question, I, there's a lot of coaching services out there. You don't even need to pay for a coaching service. I think sometimes we have mentors, we have people or friends who, who really get us to that next step. That's coaching. Mm -hmm. And I think that's uh, something that we all also need. And that brings humility. It goes back to humility of saying, hey, I can't right. do this by myself. So it's not just, hey, I can't do this by myself because I need business partners to get me there. But I need someone to push me. I need right. someone to get me to that level that can say, hey, man, you got right. this. And um, you've so still got that. coaches today. Jason Drees. I don't know if you're still, if you're working yeah, with Jason absolutely. Drees. I'm working with a Jason Drees coach too, man. And he unlocked it. He, I would never have quit my job. I would never have been technically financially free and out of my job if it wasn't for them, man. So fully. I agree. That's exactly right. Yeah. Gotta go. Gotta get a coach. Gotta wherever you need help, just have the humility and go find someone. Last thing here, where can my listeners or watchers find you online, email, any anything that you want to give out? Yeah, so they can find me on Facebook under Mario Sandoval. And my Instagram is new dot beginnings 
2022. Cool. And yeah, people can follow me, ask me questions, or maybe, man, my my purpose in life is to see other people succeed. I've made it. I I feel honored. I feel amazing. But now I feel that my calling is to help others, not just make it financially, because finan being financially independent is just only one. If you're miserable, you're depressed, you're sad, because trust me. I went through the worst depression ever mm. when I had everything. When I was, when I'm wealthy, I have my Lambo, I have everything, my mm. health. And I went through the worst depression because I didn't have a purpose. Mm. And that's one thing that Brody and I are in our coaching are teaching is purpose. We're mm. going to get you the financial stability. We're going to get you the financial independence. But we're, you got to find your purpose. Otherwise, you're, you're just going to be miserable. Man, fully agreed there. Dude, and reach out to Mario if you're looking for some coaching tech. You can reach out to me. I could connect you guys, whatever that may be. And yeah, the you know, our, from here. Yeah, you can also contact us at moneyvisionpurpose.com. And uh, like I said, man, I'm always willing to talk to people and hear them in the right way. Or if they need babysitting, that's what we got the coaching for. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, baby. Hey, from the Financial Freedom Fast podcast. This is Mario Sandoval, and we are signing off. Take care.